And we'll roll on those cameras. Take two, yeah. Parker. Great, thank you. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Romain. We've been steadily improving Codex to make it feel like a more capable and reliable coding collaborator. And for us, it's very important for Codex to be everywhere you work. And that's why we launched an IDE extension. You can now have Codex right in your code editor, whether it's like VS Code, Cursor, Windsor, or many others. And with me today, I have Gabriel, engineering lead on the extension, to give us a quick tour. We on the team have been working really hard to bring lots of new things to Codex, and I can't wait to show you. Amazing, let's dive in. So I'm working on this OpenAI FM project, and I noticed that it's using service workers. There's this interesting return clause. I'm gonna go over to Codex and just ask it why. So what is this clause for? You'll notice that there's an auto context button. That tells Codex everything that I've recently done in my IDE. So what that means here is that basically you're using GPT-5 Codex, the new model we launched, but you're kind of like, I'm guessing, prompting it a little differently when you're in yeah. the IDE? Exactly, exactly. So in this case, I've just said, what is this clause for? Mm -hmm. And it said, it short circuits the effect when the browser doesn't support service workers, which That's awesome. makes sense. If it determines that something is easy or a simple chat prompt, it'll usually respond pretty quickly. Why don't you kind of navigate the code base a little bit and uh, let's pick something to implement. Great, this button component happens to have a to-do to add a hover state. Yep. And if you have Codex installed, it will give you an opportunity to implement any to-do comments with Codex. So if I click it, it's gonna kick off a local conversation and give Codex all the context it needs to fix this. That's awesome. So anyone that has like any to-dos or any task in their backlog can just like start sending them over to Codex. Yeah, that's right. Can you show us a little bit like what's happening behind the scenes now? So behind the scenes, when you ask Codex to do something, it starts exploring your code base and running commands, and you can see its progression as it's going along. First, it's reading code, and then when it decides to run commands, it runs in a safe sandbox that ensures that it's not gonna modify files outside of your project, and if the model ever needs to do something that it thinks it can't run successfully in the sandbox, it can ask you for permission. It explored the code base, it updated the button, and then it made a bunch of changes at the end. You can then review the changes right in your IDE to see all of the changes it made in one place. Yep. But I think we should just go see if it worked. Let's do it. Moment of truth. Hop over to the browser, and I'm going to hover over these buttons. And as you can see, there's a nice, subtle hover state where it, the shadow expands, the card shifts up a little bit. I was looking around the, the site, and I noticed that there's a few other elements that also don't have a hover state. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this conversation we just had, and I'm going to move it from local into the cloud. And this is going to use Codex in the cloud to continue this task without taking over my computer. I think it's like completely changing the way we think about engineering, right? Because you can start like a task locally, offload it to your teammate in the cloud to just take care of it. Mm -hmm. That's really magical. Exactly. And so this is going in the cloud. It's going to include the changes we just had locally, but we can come back to it later. So Amazing. we can stash our changes or even throw them away and bring them back from the remote tasks later if we want. Amazing. So this was a very like simple task that you showed us. I'd like to see like Codex take some like initiatives in terms of the design direction or the I don't know like features or layout of the app. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my IDE settings to run it in the cloud. Yep. And this time this is going to be a new task. I don't need it to use my local changes or IDE context, but I'm going to ask it to add a button to the header to make a really interesting thing, something fun. It's like not just like dark mode, something more interesting than that. And next to it, I can tell Codex how many times I want it to attempt this task. So you just gave those instructions, and Codex Cloud is going to work separately four different times, mm -hmm. with maybe coming up with four different approaches to solve that problem. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing to watch Codex work. Every single attempt is going to be a little bit different. In fact, we, we even have Codex currently working on the hover states and the theme at the same time. I could even have another conversation going locally if I wanted. I'm curious, by the way, in your own personal experience, like how has that changed your workflow? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, back when we were launching Codex Web, it was like 1.30 in the morning, and we were trying to get this really fun Lottie animation to animate whenever you submit a new conversation in Codex. Um, and it worked perfectly locally, but when we push it into production, all of the Lottie animations, except for this one, wouldn't work. So we asked Codex to attempt it four times. Three of them did not work. 
but one of them figured out this very obscure content security policy issue that was preventing some inline JavaScript that happens to be in that one wow. animation from working. And it saved that aspect of the launch. That's incredible. So I guess for like very nasty or complex like bugs or like, mm -hmm. you know, things that you're kind of like struggling to find out, this is exactly the kind of thing that Codex can take a look at. Exactly. Like even like look at it from different angles, try different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. And I'll use it for planning even, planning or working on a complicated refactor where I don't even know exactly what I want, but I'll have Codex take multiple attempts. And sometimes I'll take the best aspects of each one. That's really cool. So what's going on now with those four tasks? Okay, let's take a look at this. So we have attempt number one. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it, see what happens. And go over to the browser and you can see Oh, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's very, very good, actually. Very creative. OK. I've never seen that before. Same. Uh, let's okay. see what else it did. Let's, let's take a look at the next one. So I'm going to revert that one, and then I'm going to apply attempt number two. Oh, yeah, the entire theme has already changed. Interesting. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at the next one. Whoa, that's pretty okay. cool. I'm guessing, like, conversely to what we did right before, now you can take any of these cloud tasks, mm -hmm. check them out locally, and keep working locally. Yeah, your code editor. Exactly. That's very exactly. magical. Gabriel, before we wrap, like, can you check on the status of that task that you sent at the beginning that you started locally and then like, offload it to Codex Cloud? Looks like it's done. If I open up the hover state task that we kicked off, I can see now that it's modified a few additional files. And if I apply the changes locally and then go to the browser, you'll see that it added hover states for a couple of new items. The start building button yep. now has a slight hover state, as well as the switch in the top yep. right corner. Amazing. Thanks, Gabriel. Well, we hope this gave you a quick tour of how you can use Codex directly in your code editor now with the extension. It's all included in your ChatGPT subscription. In order to download the extension, you can go to openair.com slash codex or simply look for Codex in your extension marketplace. With that, thank you, and we can't wait to see what you build.